morning, church family. Welcome back to our journey through John. Uh, today we'll be reading again from John chapter 5. I want to encourage you to go ahead and turn your Bibles to John chapter 5. We'll be looking at the second part of verse 9 through verse 16. So uh, go ahead and turn your Bibles, John chapter 5, um, if you have your Bible. If you don't, uh, I want to encourage you to listen along with us as we read God's Word together. Uh, John chapter 5, starting in the second part of verse 9. Now that day was the Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who had been healed, It is a Sabbath, and it is not lawful for you to take up your bed. But he answered them, The man who healed me, that man said to me, Take your bed and walk. They asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Take up your bed and walk? Now the man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had, not, had withdrawn as there was a crowd in the place. Afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you are well. Sin no more, that nothing worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who healed him. And this was why uh, the Jews were persecuting Jesus, because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. In the passage today, we see a situation where a man is healed, uh, but in the process of being healed, he's confronted by the Jewish leaders uh, who thought he's wrong for carrying his bed on the Sabbath. Uh, this Jewish leadership uh, was deeply devoted to the idea that the Sabbath day should be kept holy. They're looking back to the Old Testament and uh, looking at the particular commandment that where God says to keep the Sabbath holy. That word for keep has to do with protecting, and so they had created a bunch of rules and laws and put them in place to prevent people from sinning on the Sabbath. And so when they say the man was wrong for carrying his bed on the Sabbath, they're not talking about that he was just uh, doing something that was kind of socially unacceptable. They were accusing him of sin. And um, the man had to make a decision at this point because the person who uh, said to him, take up your bed and walk, was the person who healed him, the one who uh, basically had given him healing after 38 years of being an invalid. Uh, and as I thought about this, um, this kind of decision the man had to make between, okay, do I listen to the words of Jesus or do I listen to uh, the religious uh, leadership here? Um, it made me think of kind of the way my relationship with my boys has changed over the years when it comes to baseball. So for years, I was their coach. I, I helped coach. I was an assistant coach for my oldest son. I was a head coach for my youngest son. And um, when I spoke to them, and not, not just as a father in those moments, but as their baseball coach, uh, the expectation was they would, they would follow along with me and uh, do the things that I said. Now, you know, you know how that would go between a father and a son. Sometimes they would do that. Sometimes they wouldn't. But uh, as they've gotten older, now they're being coached by other people, and both of them are in, in school baseball, and as they're in school baseball, I'll, you know, I'll watch their games, and as I'm watching their games, I'll see something that happens in the game. They'll take a pitch, or they'll steal a base and maybe get caught stealing, or they'll they'll try to take an extra base on a hit and score a run and get thrown out the plate or whatever, and I'll, I'll think to myself, what were they thinking? Like, what, what's going on here? And after the game, inevitably, I'd ask them, you know, you know, what were you thinking in the situation? And sometimes I was just looking for information. Sometimes I'm, I'm like, why did you do that? And without fail, um, it would almost always be the coach told me to. Um, and what I had to realize is what their coach said trumped what I said in that situation because their coach, when they're on the field, um, is the one in authority, the one that, that tells them, this is how you play the game, this is what you're supposed to do. And in the same way, we see Jesus here uh, trumping the authority of that Jewish leadership and saying to the man, look, you're healed now, um, and ultimately, you can listen to what I say over what they say. If I say, take up your bed and walk, it's because I have authority to do so. And uh, the Jewish leadership uh, had to, at that point, uh, and that man's mind, uh, had to move out of a place of authority because Jesus had taken that place. And so what I want us to think about today is, are there places in our life where um, for a long time we've allowed kind of uh, our social customs or maybe religious traditions be things that are uh, places of authority that really don't have anything to do with what Jesus has told us. And I want to encourage us, if there are places in us where you know we need to, need to make changes in our life, um, where we think about certain things, uh, the way we think about uh, whether or not we, we should get revenge or how we feel about a particular group of people or whatever, 
maybe those things are really socially motivated or they are part of our religious traditions, but they don't have anything to do with what Jesus has told us. And if there are those places in us, we have to bow to the authority of Jesus and say yes to what he says and say no to our society or our religious traditions. And so let's pray really quickly and ask God to help us to submit to the authority of Jesus, to pay attention to these places in our life and then to submit to Jesus. Father, we uh, come to you today uh, thankful for the gift of the words of Jesus and the authority that you have given him. Uh, we're going to talk more about this in the next couple of days. God, I'm thankful um, that you have given Jesus authority, and we pray, Lord, that you would help us um, in, in all parts of our life to submit to his authority, to say yes to his ways, and to do what it is he says to do. Um, so if he tells us to take up our bed and walk, and we in the past wouldn't do that because that's not the right time to do it, Lord, help us to say yes to him. Um, whatever it is he's told us to do, I pray, Lord, that we would be a people that would bow to the authority of Jesus. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.